Regular meeting number 49 will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Member Stenziano, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome Reverend Emily Corzine, the Associate Pastor of First Congregational Church, to the podium. Pastor, the floor is yours. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all life and love, creator of all things, we give you thanks for this day. We gather for the beginning of this council meeting as your people, called to this meeting for all purposes you present before us. We are your elected leaders who represent constituents. We are appointed officials who fulfill the work of this city at all levels. We are concerned citizens striving to live in this city in unity and peace, we are Columbus, people of every faith, every nationality, every orientation, and every belief. For this city, O oh God, we pray. For those who are still hungry, for those who are still homeless, for those still underemployed, for those with medical and mental health concerns, for those of us stirring, still hurting for, uh, um, for a life well lived. And we pray for all branches of our city government who work for and care for the people of the city. Bless all of those who have gathered and the work, may they work for the betterment of all people in this city. May they bring to their work a spirit of wisdom and kindness and justice. We offer this prayer in the name of the one who knows us and loves us each by name, our creator God, amen. Amen, thank you, Pastor. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Okay. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda. They'll be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read in the record? Not this time. At this time, I request that the following ordinances and resolutions be removed from the consent action portion of the agenda. Those are resolution 263X-2017, as well as in Judiciary and Court Administration 2700 and 2701-2017. How about resolutions from members of council? Councilmember Elizabeth Brown, Councilmember Mitch Brown. Thank you, Council President. Uh, tonight, I have one resolution. I would like to ask retired Lieutenant Carl Barth and his family, along with Deputy Chief Quinlan, to please approach the podium. Tonight I have resolution 0250 X-2017 to recognize Lieutenant Carl Barth in honor of his 56 years of distinguished service with the Columbus Division of Police. Whereas Lieutenant Carl Barth is a Columbus native of Columbus West Side and a graduate of Columbus Central High School, he served in the U.S. Navy as a hospital corpsman for three and one half years, served in the Navy Reserves for another six and one half years, and whereas Lieutenant Barth is the longest tenured officer in the history of the Columbus Division of Police, during that time he served in 14 different positions, beginning as a motorcycle officer. Later he provided instruction at the Columbus Police Academy, and coordinated public safety special events. 
and whereas Lieutenant Carl Barth participated in the inception of some of the most cherished events in Columbus, including Red, White, and Boom, Columbus Marathon, which we just ran this past weekend, the Doodah Parade, Arnold Expo, the Quarter Horse Congress, the Ford Dealers 500 race, and the Susan B. Komen race for the cure. Whereas Lieutenant Barth has been involved in providing security detail in conjunction with the United States Secret Service for every president since John F. Kennedy, Lyndon Baines Johnson, Richard M. Nixon, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Wilson Reagan, George H.W. Bush, William J. Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack H. Obama, and Donald J. Trump in 2016. Whereas Lieutenant Barth has also been involved in providing security for every Ohio State football season since 1962, when Woody Hayes was coaching the Buckeyes. Whereas Lieutenant Barth has come from a long tradition of Columbus police officers with his father, Carl Barth, and his brother, Gary Barth, both serving the division, and whereas Lieutenant Barth has exemplified the core values of the Columbus Division of Police throughout his career, his dedication to the Columbus community and passion for public safety have truly been blessings to the city of Columbus and its residents. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this council does hereby express its appreciation for the outstanding contributions that have been made by Lieutenant Carl Barth during his 56 years of service to the City of Columbus. And this council congratulates him on his retirement. I move for adoption. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. With that, I would like to ask Lieutenant Barth, you have the floor, sir. Well, I just want to say it's been a privilege and honor to serve the citizens of the community. I loved working with all the officers at police headquarters, also with all the different members of the community and all the different events. Uh, I really enjoy it. And the only thing I can say to the new officers out is treat people like you'd like to be treated. And usually they will treat you about the same, but not always. <laughs> Lieutenant McCommand, Deputy Chief Quinlan, on behalf of the Chief, your comments, sir. Thank you, Councilmember Brown. On behalf of Chief of Police Kim Jacobs, I'd like to take this opportunity to personally express the gratitude of an entire division of police to Lieutenant Carl Barth, the sworn members, the civilian staff, and all command staff, all uh, supervisors within the division have grown up basically on the division of police under Lieutenant Carl Barth's um, keen eyesight on how to train officers. He was a guest instructor for, I think, everybody that's on the division right now. So I'd like to personally thank you for what you have done for the division of police, first of all. Your family. I'd like to thank your family for sharing Lieutenant Barth with us for over half a century. Um, most officers go through a, a career cycle, a, kind of a, a generation. We have very few people that have been kind of gotten to an institution status. And when you get someone that's been here as long as uh, Carl Barth has, uh, he's kind of a, one of our foundations of the division. And one thing about Carl that has really stood apart is I mentioned that he does instructing. He's taught a lot of people. He hasn't always benefited from the, from the opportunities of the football games and the presidential visits and everything else for himself. He has stepped aside and brought other people in and made sure that they got to experience some of these same opportunities that are kind of unique to policing. It's, it's very rare that people get as close to the President of the United States as Carl Barth or some other officers have or get to do things out at the high State football game and with the Komen race and all the different uh, marathons and events in the city of Columbus. So he's welcomed other officers in and given them an opportunity to, to learn and have some experience that they can tell their kids about someday as well. That's his selflessness. He has always been in service to the division of police as well as to the public. And that is a testament to you. To your family, thank you very much for sharing him with us for these years. He has definitely made a difference in the division of police. And I saved the community for last. 
it's a little bit of a liberty I'd like to take, but I, on the behalf of the citizens of Columbus, I'd like to thank Carl Barth for what he has done for this community. The safety he has brought to world events, to national things that occur here in Columbus, to sports, to concerts, to races, to VIP visits. It has been tremendous what he has accomplished and led over the years. I don't know too many people in, in my lifetime that have ever worked on the police department before Miranda was around. <laughs> so we all grew up knowing what Miranda was. He actually started before that. So the fact that he's been able to touch so many people for so long in this community has been astounding. And we appreciate that. And I think the community thanks you for your service. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Chief. Any comments from my colleagues? Council President, of course. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Brown. Uh, Lieutenant, on behalf of Columbus City Council and the citizens of the city of Columbus, uh, thank you for being such a dedicated public servant. Uh, thank you, And to sir. your family uh, for giving us the opportunity uh, to enjoy his knowledge, his dedication, and his passion to the service and commitment of others. I was just talking with Councilmember Mitch Brown uh, right before council. We were standing there. And he's like, oh, you know, we have Lieutenant Barth. And I was like, oh, I know. I can't believe like, who will work. I mean, these days in 2017 to think to have a career, you know, of 50 greater years in, in, the, in a job that you love. And then I looked over and saw Mr. Dorian. So between you all, uh, <laughs> between, between you and me go way back. Yeah. I can tell you where he grew up on the street. <laughs> I'm sure you all do. <laughs> but to, to think that uh, the city of Columbus is so fortunate to have uh, your history, your knowledge, and everything that you shared with every citizen, on it, whether it was a presidential visit or a 5K, uh, serving a noble cause that tried to make someone's lives better, that you were at the heart of that. And uh, you deserve a long and prosperous retirement. We're going to miss you, but thank you for the service that you have done. We even brought out a woman on stilts for this, so uh, <laughs> you, should feel, you should feel very good about things. Thank you, Councilman Brown. Thank you. Thank you. The President Pro Tem. Thank you, Councilman Brown. I just want to say thank you. That's all I can say is just thank you. Um, obviously, you love the city, and you certainly have loved being a, a Columbus police officer. And to your family again, just thank you because this is a tough job. And to have served in it for 56 years is pretty extraordinary. And so for all the list of things that um, Councilman Brown mentioned, that um, you're just a walking, living history in this community. And just thank you for your dedication, your steadfastness, and um, just your commitment. Um, in an age where people jump jobs, you know, every few years to go do other things, um, it's just pretty amazing that um, someone would say, this is the career for me. I'm going to make Columbus a better place by your steadfastness. So congratulations. I wish you Godspeed um, to you, to your family. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Lieutenant, would you please introduce your members of your family, please? Oh, this is my wife, Margaret. My daughter, Jill, she's up from uh, Carolina, North Carolina, Charlotte. My daughter, Mindy, and her husband, Bill, is also a police officer and one of our detectives. And my daughter, Amy, and her husband, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, I have to take a little bit of liberty, if I may, uh, Council President. Uh, I've known Lieutenant Barth for a very long time. Uh, before I became director of public safety for the city, uh, we knew each other. Uh, but I have to tell you two quick stories. One in particular, uh, Lieutenant Barth is the only person uh, who has a picture of me with a pink Afro wig. Uh, uh, not uh, anymore. I ship that around. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Lieutenant. I appreciate that very, very much. That's the, that's what happens when you retire. <laughs> And, and secondly, he will tell you the story about uh, my daughter running in a race. And uh, I told the lieutenant that, all right, she wasn't going to participate in this particular race at Ohio State. And only to have him call me 45 minutes later and tell me, oh, Lindsay's with me, director. You don't have to worry. And she's dressed kind of appropriately. I said, oh, <laughs> thank you, Carl. I, I, I know she's with you. I don't have to worry. Uh, but in all sincerity, Lieutenant, uh, to spend 56 years and the work and the things you've done for this city, 
uh, which people simply do not know. But I, I provided to all the members of the council a, a brief little bio from, and I say brief, uh, it's only a full page long here, and a document that highlights you know, Lieutenant Barf's career and all the people from Bob Hope uh, to Michael Douglas, you name it. Uh, if they've come to Columbus, they met with Carl Barth. And I will close by saying, when I, again, when I became the safety director and I got a phone call from the Secret Service about things and they asked me one question, and that question was, is Barf still there? And I said, <laughs> yes, and they said, we don't have to worry. And we're going to miss you, Carl. Thank you very, very much. On behalf of a grateful city and a grateful city council, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have. <laughs> on this fact sheet, the, the, one, the one thing I know how he's going to have a good time in retirement, he only missed one sick day. One sick day in 56 years. Well, uh, and part of that goes to he had a conversation with Mr. Doreen about that because, again, uh, yeah, it's going to be significant. For it's him. impressive. <laughs> it's impressive. Councilmember Hardin. Thank you, President Klein. And Flipping through the book of Lieutenant Carl Booth, you see that he also met Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. here in Columbus. So the history in which um, that uh, he is Lieutenant Barth really is appreciated by this city and, and by this council. Thank you, President or Council Member Brown, for for that recognition. Uh, Council President, I'd like to invite Executive Director uh, Scott Myers, uh, President Chris Darnell, and the 2017. Congress Queen Sarah Laughlin down to the podium. I'd like to introduce uh, Resolution 0263X-2017 to recognize and celebrate the 51st All-American Quarter Horse Congress in the City of Columbus. The first All-American Quarter Horse Congress was held in Columbus, Ohio in 1967 and since then has become the largest single breed horse show in the world. The All-American Quarter Horse Congress draws over 650,000 visitors to our city each year and contributes around $285 million to our local economy. It is certainly a, a cultural, uh, has so, cultural uh, significance to this city, certainly has an economic benefit to our city. We um, wanted to recognize the Quarter Horse Congress just because of how impactful it is to each and every one of us. I have to say, personally, um, this is one of my favorite times of the year. Uh, my father, who is past now, um, grew up, uh, raised American Quarter Horses, and so I spent many of my years as a child at the Congress, and I get to uh, put on my dad's old boots um, around Congress time, and I get to think back to all the memories that I have uh, there, but also all the memories that are being shaped day, each year uh, that the Congress is in Columbus. And so on behalf of a, a grateful city, we want to uh, recognize the contributions that the Quarter West Congress makes to our city each year. Um, we're so excited that we are underway. I heard that raining was this past weekend. Um, also where our uh, 2017 uh, queen was crowned. I'm so excited about Sarah. She is also from Columbus. Uh, and so that we have that, we have the queen that will be amongst us throughout the year, uh, even after Congress leaves. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to um, uh, President Chris Donnell. Thank you, Councilman Hardin, for this recognition. I'd also like to thank Council President Klein and all the members of the City Council for the warm welcome and kind words. As you know, the 51st annual 
All-American Quarter Horse Congress is well underway in Columbus, Ohio. The Congress started just as a three-day event right here in Columbus at the Expo Center in 1967. Over the last 51 years, our event has grown to 28 days, bringing 7,500 horses and 650,000 people to the Expo Center in Central Ohio. This single breed horse show is the largest in the world with this year's exhibitors will compete for more than $3 million in prizes and awards. The Congress will produce $325 million of economic impact to the local Columbus economy. Over the last 51 years, the All-American Quarter Horse Congress has brought 700 million people to Columbus and brought an estimated 7.5 billion, with a B, billion, in, in direct and indirect impact to the Columbus region. We invite all of you and every citizen of Columbus to come visit the Congress during the month of October out at the Expo Center. And thank you again for all you have done to support the Congress. Without your support, I don't believe this event would be what it is today. And I'd like to introduce Sarah Laughlin. She is a fellow Buckeye from Vermilion, Ohio, and our executive director, Dr. Scott Myers of the Ohio Corridors Association. Thank you. Queen uh, Laughlin, would you like to say any, <laughs> sure. make any remarks? So good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having us come out and speak with you today. Um, so I'm the Quarter Horse Congress Queen. I was just reigned on Saturday, which is very exciting. Um, a little bit about the competition. There were 17 girls from all across the country, and you are judged on an interview, a written test on our 300-page rule book, which I started studying for in June. It's very extensive. And also horsemanship patterns. So it's a great honor to um, come together with all these women, learn about their different paths within the Quarter Horse industry, and then um, be chosen to represent such an amazing organization that allows me to find fulfillment in showing horses and everything I do. Um, it definitely has made me the person that I am today. I could not separate all the skills I've learned from growing up in the horse industry. I and mean, currently I am earning my master's degree in higher education and student affairs at Ohio State. I'm very passionate about access and equity to education. So hopefully in this position, I will raise money for the Ohio Quarter, House, Quarter Horse Foundation to provide scholarships for our youth to go to school. So thank you so much for letting us come out and speak with you and share a little bit more about our event. And congratulations again. Um, Mr. Myers, do you have any? Uh, do any, any of my colleagues, Council President. Thank you, Councilmember Hardin. Uh, it's not lost upon the city how important of an event uh, this is to all of us. Uh, and I know that because of the size of, of your event and what you do, um, both with bringing people to the city and the economic impact, that you could go to a lot of places. Uh, and I want you to know that we are grateful and thankful that you're in the city of Columbus. And we value our uh, partnership that we have together, and we look forward to uh, working together many years uh, to make sure that all the participants, um, all of the, the visitors, uh, love the city and know that we're in this together and we thank you for all, everything that you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Hardin, and I too wanted to say thank you. And I'm going to say thank you uh, on behalf of the arts organizations. Thank you on behalf of Experience Columbus. Thank you on behalf of the social service organizations because when you bring your organization here, uh, people are going staying in our hotels. That's bed tax dollars that support the different areas I just mentioned. So besides you having such a great event that people should come out and see, you are making an impact on this community in a significant way. And so thank you for choosing Columbus. I just appreciate um, this wonderful organization being here and your leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Hardin. Seeing no uh, further comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein.
And President Klein, my only other comment is that uh, this weekend, uh, the Department of Neighborhoods is hosting the MBK Leadership Conference, uh, Empowered, Mentally Strong and Successful. It's gonna be this Saturday, October 21st at Franklin University. We're encouraging all folks to come out and participate. Uh, if you would like to register, you can register online at columbus.gov slash MBK2017. Thank you, and that's all I have. Thank you, President Klein. I have two resolutions and a brief presentation tonight. First, I'd like to invite Mayo McKinde and a number of guests to the podium to accept resolution 0280X-2017 to celebrate Nigerian Independence Day in honor of Nigerian Americans and their contributions to the city of Columbus. So in learning about this, I had not realized, but now I'm well aware that uh, the city of Columbus is home to the sixth largest community of Nigerian Americans in the United States. Uh, the Nigerians in Diaspora Organization was founded in 2000 to connect Nigerians across the United States and help them develop as professionals in the workplace and pillars in their communities. The Nido Ohio chapter focuses on building and sustaining strong Nigerian American community in the city of Columbus and around Ohio. Though I know Nigerian Independence Day was celebrated earlier this month, this is our first opportunity to have the group down and present this resolution. Uh, so really appreciate you all being here. I don't know if my colleagues have any comments. Seeing none, I'll move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Denziano, Tyson, President Klein. And Mayo, the uh, podium is yours, but could you also introduce your guests? Yes, um, guests? Uh, so we have a lot of uh, people here from the community, uh, so I will, I will definitely allow everybody to introduce themselves in a minute, but definitely I wanted to make sure that we emphasize on um, some of the contributions that the Nigerian uh, American community has uh, made in this uh, city. Uh, it's one of the most cosmopolitan cities in America and one of the most uh, diverse cities in America. We take pride in that. Uh, as someone who is a son of um, Nigerian Americans who came for school at the, at the Ohio State University and uh, they've been able to do what, uh, what they did, they, they were known as the first uh, uh, Africans to be bring drumming and dancing to that campus, doing stuff at the Ohio Amphitheater. So, uh, I know that in this same city we have a lot of uh, Nigerian businessmen uh, who own different businesses and who employ um, many Columbus citizens and uh, who have uh, just brought so many things into Columbus. So many professors. I mean, there's so many different fields that they've, they've uh, infiltrated into and, and made sure that, uh, uh, Columbus is a better place. So I definitely want to make sure that these. Uh, um, family members I have, I call family members I have, can introduce themselves and uh, talk about what, um, what they say for to today. And thank you, Council Member Stenziano, for uh, stepping up and uh, doing this, because it's been uh, 57 years of Nigerian uh, independent, and people have been doing different things in this city, but it's been recognized in front of uh, the city of Columbus, so thank you. Really, I, I will start with the president, and uh, we have a president of NIDO. Her name is Sister Teresa Edoja, and uh, we have the treasurer and the secretary of NIDO. And that's NIDO, again, is a uh, Nigerian diaspora organization. This is the Ohio chapter. It's an uh, international uh, organization of all Nigerians in diaspora. Uh, There's been recognized by the Nigerian government as the, the body uh, internationally. So they do a lot of events, like you said. So. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Teresa Edoja. I am the president of the Nigerians in the Diaspora Organization, Ohio Chapter. I am very proud to be here before you tonight to present Nigeria to you. We are an organization that encompasses a lot of other Nigerian groups. Uh, Nigeria, as you know, is a very diverse, multilingual country. But as Nigerians in Ohio, we near each other and we act in, with one voice. I would dare to say that in Ohio, among immigrants in Ohio, Nigeria has the largest number of professionals that contribute to the economy of the state. Medical doctors, lawyers, accountants, professors, teachers, correctional workers, business owners. And um, if you trace the history of African immigrants back, I can bet Nigerian, Nigeria was, Nigerians were the first to land in Ohio as African immigrants. So we take pride in our city. 
We take pride in contributing to the economy of this state as a whole. We're talking the entire state of Ohio. Most importantly, the Columbus, Ohio, that we found as home made our, and raising our children. So tonight, I am most privileged to represent the Nigerians in the diaspora organization. Here, I do have other uh, uh, representatives from the other Nigerian groups that may want to say a thing or two to the, uh, to the city council. Onyemobi is our treasurer. Uh, greetings, I'm the treasurer of uh, NIDA, Ohio, Onyemobi Aniwo. I thank you very much for this opportunity to go and uh, talk about the various contributions that we've made to Ohio and America as a whole. And we hope that we can keep this tradition going on. Thank you. Bukola is our honorable general secretary. Hi, council members, um, president. I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to actually showcase Nigeria in a good light. Um, here, uh, we do have a couple of Nigerians that have been here. 10 years, 11 years ago, I was um, immigrated through my mom into um, Columbus. Actually, my brother was born here. And I said, I will leave uh, by next year. Oh, well, it's, that's 11 years ago now. I'm still in Columbus. So <laughs> Columbus has been a place uh, I've settled down, have a family. I actually have been to about 33 states within the United States, and I still end up coming back to Columbus because um, that's a good home for us. We have many families. We have many groups. Actually, we have over 13 other organizations, Nigerian organizations in Columbus that do different things. Uh, some of them do adopt the highways. Um, some of them, yeah, there's um, the I-71. They do clean that from time to time. We have some of the East Dublin Grandview. So we just come and share the culture, and we do appreciate Columbus as a city um, to immerse us into, into, the, into the city, and that's great. And I do tell people outside, I said, if you haven't been to Columbus, then you haven't been to America. Thank you. And I'll, I'm privileged to introduce the past president of NIDO, Ohio. Would you want to say thing or two to, to the city? Okay. This is Miss Laura that represents the Women's Support Network. Hello. Thank you for um, inviting us here today to uh, bestow us this honor. Um, I am Lauren Waru. I am the vice president of Nigerian Women's Support Network. Uh, our main goal and focus of our group is to support um, we say that to help those who are helpless and give voice to those who are voiceless. Um, we focus on children and um, orphanages. Uh, we adopt orphanages in Nigeria and we uh, raise funds for orphanages and um, uh, hospitals here in the States. So uh, we, we have big things in store that we are currently working on, um, but we want to thank you for giving us this platform to show ourselves, so thank you. Thank you, and this is Ms. Yvette Anyagolo for the Weavers of Nigeria. Good evening, everyone. My name is Yvette Kelly Anyagolo. I am a friend of Nigeria. Both of my children are Buckeyes, but they are Nigerian Americans. I am a proud West Indian and have been a member of Weavers of Nigeria since its inception in 1988. Weavers of Nigeria is a community group of women we support children's hospital, small train uh, on the national level, and locally we also adopt schools and we give um, scholarship to member children. In Nigeria, we fund um, the Nigerian Red Cross, um, some homes, uh, Nigerian Children's Hospital, in addition to Children's Hospital in the United States, and we also support uh, homes for handicap and mentally ill children in Nigeria. We are active in the community. Last year we hosted Taste of Nigeria and it comes up again in 2018. And thank you for this opportunity. Wanna say something quickly for the NSP? Good evening everybody. Oh, <laughs> thank you for giving us this opportunity. Um, it's an honor and privilege that you guys have given us Nigerians this opportunity to come before you. Now, this increases our happiness in being Columbus and being part of the city and being recognized. 
So we appreciate it. We thank you. I'm a member of the Nigerian Society for Progress. I'm their general secret, um, treasurer and secretary, whichever one. <laughs> so thank you very much for the, for the honor and occasion today. Well, suddenly you see everybody's uh, excited to be here, and uh, we look forward to doing this more in the future. Again, I thank you, Council Members, Council President, Klein, and thank you so much. And we look forward to keeping ourselves a big family in, in, uh, in Columbus, Ohio. So thanks again for tonight. Next, I would like to invite Timothy Wolf Starr to the podium. Um, he told me he, I see him popping up on the way back. You learned what I did in law school, always sit in the back. Um, to talk uh, and introduce the Levesque Fitness and Vertical 3K event that's happening uh, this Saturday. Uh, that event is going to be a one of a kind exciting event that we're holding actually in the Levesque Tower Parking a lot to showcase our local athlete groups and provide for fun fitness af af opportunities. Tim. Thank you very much, uh, President Klein, council members. Um, it's wonderful, it seems like just the other day we were here celebrating the 10th Independence Day and now we're, we're starting a new festival or just around the corner from you. Um, so this festival is something which I consider uniquely Columbus. Uh, it was a partnership put together between the Greater Columbus uh, Sports Commission and a lot, many, many, many different partners. We have over 40 different partners which are coming on out to do different sports interactions, classes, everything from yoga and cross training to hip hop dance sessions up on the rooftop 10 stories above City Hall and virtual reality boxing. It's, uh, it's been a great honor to work with so many different partners and it really shows the diversity of Columbus. So uh, I wanted you to hear about it from us first before uh, it uh, goes into year 10 as well. So uh, thank you very much for having me and uh, for everything the city, recreation and parks, and all the other partners have uh, done to contribute. Can you give some details, location? I know it's, I said the parking garage, but time, uh, what the vertical 3K entails in case Councilmember Mitch Brown wants to participate in it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'd love to have you. So uh, the festival itself is in the Levesque Tower parking garage. So directly across the street from City Hall. Uh, it's a 10-story garage where uh, we have a 3K going at 11 a.m. and we have classes starting at 9 a.m. and we have races all day long with different specialties like high poke and pizza. So it's a festival really for everybody. Uh, the Y is putting together some amazing family programming. Uh, it's going to be spinning up the garage so as everybody is running around in between they're going to see all the different kinds of fitness. Everything is as wild as uh, one of our partners is bringing out a giant wheel and 40 uh, plastic bands that everyone will pull as they do their class, and it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. It's been a great honor to get to know all of these options that I never knew existed, and an even greater one to get to share it with all of our neighbors. So I really appreciate you coming down, uh, sharing the event, and encourage my colleagues if you feel like no is the answer. All right. <laughs> there will be yoga. There's a yoga floor maybe on there, the seventh or eighth level. That's right. Um, <laughs> thank you for taking the tour. And um, lastly, I want to point out our official after party is uh, Highball Halloween. So That is a wonderful segue, <laughs> Tim. Uh, thank you for being here. Look forward uh, to that and the citizens hopefully uh, coming down. So then I would like to invite Betsy Pandora of the Short North Alliance uh, down to talk about the official after party of the Levesque uh, 3K uh, that's celebrating its 10th anniversary, and that's Highball Halloween. At this time, I'd like to introduce Resolution 0267X-2017 to recognize and celebrate the 10th anniversary of Highball Halloween and its contribution to the city of Columbus. As I think we all know, Highball Halloween has been raising funds for the betterment of the Short North Arts District for the past 10 years as one of the nation's most elaborate costume parties. Founded in 2008, as a one-night event, it has certainly grown and continues to uh, exceed, I think, everyone's expectation and definitely something Betsy looks forward to getting sleep afterwards. Uh, this event will be hosted on the Short North Alliance this Saturday, and I look forward to the festivities all day. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I'll move for adoption. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. The floor is yours, Betsy. 
Thank you so much, Council Member Stinziano and all members of Council for uh, this acknowledgement of Hypel and for your support of the event. Um, uh, this is our 10th anniversary year and 10 years ago when leaders in our neighborhood approached the city about shutting down the largest street in our city to hold a fashion show, I think you all could have looked at us like we were crazy and uh, we're spending all of our time walking on stilts, um, but you embraced it. And um, an event like Highball has grown really to touch every facet of our community. As, as you well know, Columbus is home to the third largest fashion and design workforce uh, in the country uh, next to New York and Los Angeles and are doing a huge creative fashion show. Activates not only that whole creative community, but the entire creative community here in the Short North Arts District um, and, and uh, with our performing artists and, and fashion and design artists across our community. Um, it is uh, an event that um, touches is so many folks, even um, some of our designers designed the quarter horse costume um, outfits for our uh, queen of the quarter horse costume. So it's amazing where you find um, highball in our city. Um, it would not be possible without the tireless work of over 500 staff and volunteers that come together to do it each and every year and have allowed it to grow to attract over 30,000 people. Um, and in particular, highball really is made successful by the city of Columbus. Um, our city staff members here are truly remarkable um, and have, have contributed contributed significantly to the growth of the event um, <laughs> from the work that Director Collins and, and folks at Recreation and Parks have done, and in particular Jason Nicholson, um, to the folks in the Public Service Department under Director Gallagher's leadership, uh, in particular Mark DePiro, um, and um, folks in uh, Public Safety Director um, Pettis's department. All of our police have been incredible, and in particular it was a real honor to have Highball recognized tonight when you're recognizing Lieutenant Barth, who's uh, instrumental uh, for many, many years years in shaping the safety of highball and all of our events in the city. Uh, and of course, Director, uh, excuse me, Commissioner Teresa Long and the um, all of the public health folks who make highball um, a safe place to go as well. So uh, it is this weekend, Friday, October 20th and Saturday, October 21st. Uh, the weather is going to be fabulous and we expect all of you there in costume. So thank you so very much and we appreciate this recognition. You good? Thank you, uh, President Klein. I have one resolution. I'm going to ask Jed Morrison to please walk towards the podium. It's resolution 026X. 268X-2017. It's a resolution endorsing issue four to encourage the residents of Franklin County to support the renewing of the Franklin County Board of Development Disabilities levy. And I'm going to let uh, Mr. Jen Morrison, who is the superintendent and CEO, to share a little bit about this levy and the importance of it. Uh, thank you, Council, Councilwoman uh, Tyson, President Klein, and other council members. Thank you very much for the opportunity to just talk briefly about issue four. Uh, this is a renewal levy for children and adults who have developmental disabilities here in our community. We provide uh, early childhood services, school age services for kids who have multiple disabilities, uh, significant uh, adult services, including employment and support for adults who. Uh, need that support, so uh, this levy, I will highlight, does not raise taxes. It is a renewal, so there is absolutely no increase in, in tax, and your support actually will support uh, thousands of children and adults and their families here in our community. So thank you very much for the consideration, and uh, we encourage your adoption of the resolution. Thank you, Jed. This resolution, is, I'm gonna just read a few um, words from it. It's whereas the Franklin County Board of Development Disabilities is responsible for, for providing, for providing community-based services to children and adults with developmental disabilities. And whereas in many instances, aging parents in their 60s, 70s, and 80s lack the ability to provide the independent care that is needed for their developmentally disabled sons and daughters. And whereas the board has taken great efforts to be responsive to the community's needs, specifically by working to balance the reality of its financial resources, by implementing a long-term strategic planning process. And whereas if current trends continue, the enrollment is expected to increase at a rate of approximately 3% each year. 
This is due to a number of factors, including improvements in medical technology, greater longevity, increased awareness, and enhanced community need, population growth, and other resources. And whereas the board also provides funding to a number of organizations, including Nationwide Children's Hospital, Goodwill Columbus, the Nysonger Center at The Ohio State University, Easter Seals, the Catholic Social Services, the Columbus Jewish Center, the Childhood League, and others. And again, as um, Mr. Morrison just mentioned, if the passage of this levy, it will, it will have an unchanged, unchanged millage of 3.5 mills, which means no new taxes. So now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this council is hereby endorsed issue four, which will renew the Franklin County Board of Development and Disabilities levy. This council also encourages the residents of Franklin County to support the renewing of this levy for the good of the community. I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Denziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you, and Jeff, thank you for your leadership. Thank you. I guess I have one announcement. Um, the 16th annual 2017 Franklin County Justice Exposition and Health and Wellness Fair, Connecting Community Partners by Building Bridges and Breaking Down Barriers. It will be Wednesday, October the 18th at 373 South High Street um, at from 10 to 2 o'clock. Justice Partners who work in collaboration with the Franklin County Municipal Court, Department of Probation Services, Franklin County Office of Homeland Security and Justice Programs, and the Franklin County Reentry Program. Um, this um, fair will have provide resources for ongoing success through education, transformation, and outcomes or employment. You can also apply for medical, food, or cash benefits to the Franklin County Job and Family Services. Please bring your a photo ID and proof of income. There'll be health sc screenings by the City of Columbus and min also municipal court employees. There'll be voter registration and information on voting, various treatment providers for alcohol, drugs, mental health, anger management, and domestic violence, free vision screening, and free photo keepsakes. A farmer's market will also be there. And so um, please stop by and receive some of the services again October the 18th from 10 to 2 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, President Pro Tem Tyson. Uh, I do have one resolution. I'd like to ask Sarah Guster to come forward. It's 266X-2017 to recognize and declare October 16, 20, 16 through 20th, 2017 as Say Something Week in the City of Columbus. Can I get a motion for adoption? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. So Say Something Week was born out of the horrific mass shooting at Sandy Hook that happened five years ago um, this December. Uh, and it recognizes the fact that 80% of sh school shooters told someone of their violent plans prior to the event. And seven out of 10 people who comp um, complete suicide tell someone about their plans or give warning signs or indication. So Say Something teaches students in middle and high school how to look for warning signs, signals and threats, especially on social media, from individuals who may want to hurt themselves or others, and to let trusted adults know. So Ms. Guster, I want to make sure that you get the opportunity to speak. We certainly are grateful for your advocacy uh, in talking about this good work that is born out of such a horrific event. Thank you. Thank you, Council President Klein and other council members. This is my daughter, Allison. We are from Dublin, Ohio. Um, it's an honor for us to be here today to speak on behalf of the Ohio Sandy Hook Promise team. <clears throat> I became involved with Sandy Hook Promise because I have three small children, and my son is my oldest child. He was six at the time of the shootings, and it really struck home with my husband and I. We um, really think about it every day as we send our children off to school and hope that we've had a good morning and that we will see them again at the end of the day. And so because it struck us um, and spoke to us so strongly, I really felt like I needed to do something, anything. 
um, to try to make our world safer for our children. And so I started to follow Sandy Hook Promise on Facebook. I became a promise leader, which means that I took a promise to, in my everyday life, look for ways to prevent gun violence and also um, ways to encourage and support education programs. And then about a year ago, I came across the Know the Signs programs. So these are programs, like President Klein mentioned, um, that are aimed to help people recognize signs of um, someone who might be in crisis. And so um, I've been working for the past year to try to bring the Know the Signs programs to Dublin, Ohio city schools. And um, I've been working with administrators and teachers, parents and staff. We are trying to get the say, um, excuse me, um, start with hello program um, uh, into our younger elementary school pro um, students. And then we are also working on the um, say something program for middle school and high school. Um, Dublin City Schools already uh, works with the staff on the Signs of Suicide program uh, that Sandy Hook Promise offers and then they also offer another program for staff that is um, called Safety Assessment and Intervention and it's geared to help um, staff recognize someone who's in crisis and um, work with them immediately to address the um, problem appropriately. Um, so the no, uh, excuse me, um, the Excuse me. The Say Something program um, is being uh, rolled out in over 200 schools in Ohio this year, this week. Um, we've already worked with over 900 um, schools and youth organizations um, in Ohio, and we have over 405,000 youth and adults that have been trained, protected, and empowered to prevent violence. Um, we also know that these programs have helped to prevent school shootings, multiple suicides, and gun threats in Ohio schools. One of the greatest things, one of the things I like best about the Know the Signs programs are that they don't just focus on gun um, issues, but they've taken a step back, excuse me, they work with mental health um, prevention, mental health issues and prevention, and therefore we're able to address things like suicides, bullying, and substance abuse as well. And so, um, along with passing this resolution today, we encourage each member of council to make the promise and ask your school building leaders to work with Sandy Hook Promise so that all Columbus schools district-wide implement Say Something and other Know the Signs programs. And for those schools that already impl have implemented the Know the Signs programs, we want to ensure that the training is sustainable by adding a Save Promise Club to your school. And I'd like to conclude by asking that each of you um, take with me the pledge that we ask all of our youth and staff take at the end of our, all of our Say Something training. There are three um, steps, so if you wouldn't mind repeating after me. Um, first, look for warning signs and threats. Thank you. Two, act immediately and take it seriously. And finally, say something to a trusted adult to help create a safer, healthier school. Say something to a trusted adult to make a safe and healthier school. Thank you very much. How about comments from our elected officials, Mr. Dorian, or the Treasurer's Office, City Attorney Pfeiffer? I know that we have a couple of mun <clears throat> municipal court judges that we're going to be hearing from shortly. Uh, are there any other requests from members of council for the removal of ordinance, the resolutions, and the consent action? Seeing none, then we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day <clears throat> 30 legislation by the City Clerk. May we now have a motion to waive reading of... Thank you. <laughs> Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Harden, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, we now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading. 
Finance Committee Ordinances 2479-2499-2017, Environment Committee Resolution 252X-2017, Administration Committee Ordinance 1328-2017, Public Safety Committee Ordinance 2534-2017, Technology hmm. Committee Ordinance 2470-2017, Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 2382, 2412, 2517, 2528, 2578, 2611, 2630 and 2669-2017, Judiciary and Court Administration Committee Ordinance 2352 and 2357-2017. Zoning Committee Ordinances 2668, 2670, 2679, and 2584-2017. Thank you. The following ordinances appear on our agenda as consent actions. Uh, Clerk, will you please now read the ordinance numbers of each into the record? Resolutions of Expression 269X, 270X, 271X, 272X, 260X-2017. Finance Committee Ordinances 2219, 2305, 2519, 2520, 2521, 2559, 2596, 2612, 2703, and 2712 2017 Health and Human Services Committee Ordinances 2439, 2467, 2513, 2515, 2567, 2572 2017 Economic Development Committee Ordinance 2695, Dash 2017 Public Safety Committee Ordinances 2421, 2460, 2472, 2475, 2495, 2509, 2538, 2651 2017 Public Service and Transportation Committee Resolution 224X 2017 Ordinances 2369, 2465, 2469, 2600, and 2616 2017 Neighborhoods Committee Ordinance 2562-2017, Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinances 2372, 2376, and 2379 2017-2017, Housing Committee Ordinances 2424, 2450, 2454, 2456, 2457, 2529, 2530, 2531, 2560, 2574, 2575, 2576, 25. 92, 2598, 2625, 2656, 2657, 2688, 2694 2017. Technology Committee Ordinances 2286, 2566 2017. Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 2505, 2563, 2565, and 2577 2017. Judiciary and Court Administration Committee Ordinance 2316-2017. Appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered A0170, 171, 172, and 173-2017. Thank you, Clerk. We do have two speakers for the consent action portion. The first is Mark Kondo. Mr. Kondo, are you present? Please, yeah, please come forward. Thanks for coming down to Council. It looks like you're speaking in favor of 2651-2017, which I believe is in the Public Safety Committee. So if you could restate your name, uh, your address, any organizations you represent, you'll have three minutes. Uh, yes, my name is Mark Kondo. I reside at 124 Tibbet Road, Columbus, Ohio. Um, I'm here today to speak on the issue. Um, it's 2651-2017 uh, to equip police with body-worn cameras. Um, I'm speaking on behalf, or on behalf of myself as a concerned citizen and taxpayer. Um, I can see in our city that we have a problem with police accountability, but body cameras are only a small uh, portion of that. Um, seen time and time again where officers have been recorded doing something um, dangerous and honestly quite heinous to the citizens of Columbus, um, and nothing has been done about it. Um, body cameras only serve as evidence after misconduct and do not address the root causes of police violence and keep these incidents from occurring. Um, soon the new FOP contract will come to council for approval. And I urge you all to not sign it unless it includes provisions requiring every Columbus police officer to be trained in mental health, racial implicit bias, and de-escalation, uh, effectively rendering all officers as qualified uh, crisis intervention responders. Um, as a taxpayer and voter of Columbus, I also urge city, uh, the city council to require that all Columbus police officers after the use of force actions and or after discharging their firearm immediately be required to provide their statement on the incident in question, provide a mandatory drug test, and permanently maintain a public record of any complaint, disciplinary action taken against an officer by any entity, effectively removing any option for expungement. 
Um, first step to building trust between the Columbus Police and our community is to create space for residents to have a seat at the table. Um, I urge uh, council to work swiftly with residents and families affected by police violence to establish community collaborative agreement, similar to the one uh, reached in Cincinnati after they experienced uh, similar police violence in the early 2000s. Um, I think these steps are important to uh, having a uh, safe and free city. Um, and I know, again, with the upcoming police contract coming to council for, um, for uh, approval, um, I urge you guys to just make sure that, you know, we are taken care of and that we have a voice um, in how our communities are policed as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kondo. Any questions or comments for Mr. Kondo? Over your uh, left shoulder is uh, Deputy Director George Speaks sitting right there where it says Pettis. Um, I, I believe this, the next speaker also looks like she is speaking on this subject. So I'm going to give uh, her an opportunity to speak. If you can go ahead and grab your seat, I appreciate you coming forward. Our next speaker is Elizabeth, Sp I'm sorry, Spidel? Speedle. Close and close. Okay. 0 for 2. If you could state your name, any organizations you represent, your address, you'll have three minutes. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Spidel, um, and I'm speaking in favor of CA-26-2651-2017. Um, it is a necessary but insufficient condition to hold police accountable. The Washington Post recently published a piece on officers who are fired for misconduct and then reinstated by arbitrators due to the police contracts. We need to ensure the police contract is negotiated in a way that ensures police accountability. When I first moved to Columbus three years ago, I raved about what an incredible city my new home was. New libraries being built in communities, free activities and events for all children and families, a recreation and parks department with free and low cost activities for me and my daughter. Um, it was incredible living in a place that clearly wanted me and my family to live here. It was a couple of years before I realized that not all the communities and not all the families in Columbus were treated the way I was. In the past 18 months, I've seen individuals who have been beaten and are killed by police officers. And those same individuals and families have been re-traumatized by the failure of leadership within the police department and the city to do anything to hold officers accountable or to make sure that it won't happen to other people and other families. Recently, during a movie, my daughter, who's six and a half, asked me whether I chose to be a good person or a bad person. I said, I choose to be a good person, right, like most of us. Um, like most of the people sitting here today, um, like Mayor Ginther, like most of the police officers we interact with. But I also explain that it's not actually the saying it or the wanting it that makes it true. It's the choices we make on a daily basis to do or not do something, to say or not say something. I keep hearing that it's a few bad apples that are responsible for what's happening with the police, but we all know that's not true, right? The actual problem is the deafening silence of officers who witness abuse and don't report it. The supervisors who say that this behavior is unacceptable, but that it falls within the guidelines, and then do nothing to change the guidelines. And leaders refusing to step up and say something because it's not yet time. Let us all be vocal and stand together to make this a community that acts as though each of us, all of our families, all of our communities are equally valuable. We require a police contract that holds officers accountable for their actions, one that protects officers who stand up against those officers who are failing us, one that provides officers valuable training in mental health, implicit bias, and de-escalation, and then provides them the supports they need to effectively implement those trainings, and a contract that requires meaningful community engagement. Dr. King said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. This matters. Please don't remain silent any longer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Spidell. Uh, any questions or comments? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy, Deputy Director Speaks, uh, if you were to provide comments now, you can, um, as well as for Mr. Kondo and Ms. Spidell. Um, if Deputy Director Speaks could maybe connect with you offline, too, to answer any questions you may have further following his remarks. Deputy Director Speaks. Thank you, President Klein. Let me first say that I'm happy to meet with him uh, and go in depth into the various points. But uh, allow me to say this, that's a division currently and has for many years uh, provided training in the areas of mental health, racial bias, and de-escalation. Uh, we currently have over 300 officers uh, who are trained uh, uh, in these mental health issues. Uh, during recruit training, we more than double the hours required uh, by the state of Ohio uh, with respect to community diversity training, uh, D 
de-escalation tactics are incorporated into many facets of our annual training for all of our officers, not just uh, the recruits. But I would like to go over in-depth with the speakers today and hopefully uh, answer some of their concerns. Uh, and we would ask you to do that, Deputy Director Speaks. I know they touched upon you know, universal training of CIT um, and as well as uh, use of force, de-escalation, and mental health, uh, as well as racial profiling. I know they mentioned that too, uh, of how that's being treated with um, not only the new recruits, but our current officers who are on the streets. I will be happy to go over that. Thank you, Deputy Director Speaks. Any questions or comments further about the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, can I get a motion for approval? Clerk, call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes. Hardin? Yes. Page? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Klein? Yes. Consent action carries. We'll now move, uh, which normally we'll be moving to the Finance Committee, which is chaired by the President Pro Tem, but I'm going to skip around for a second and go directly to Councilmember Stenziano in uh, Judiciary and Court Administration. So Chair Stenziano, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. Uh, tonight in Judiciary and Court Administration, bring forward ordinance 2700-2017, and it's on page 17 of the agenda for my colleagues. And I also would like to welcome up Judge Paley. I'm told Judge Hawkins, I saw Judge O'Grady, and Chief Probation Officer Molly Gottner. Um, ordinance 27, 2017 to authorize a supplemental appropriation within the public safety initiative subfund to the Franklin County Municipal Court for the purpose of funding positions related to probation services in the domestic violence unit and to declare an emergency. Uh, always proud of the work we're able to do with the Municipal Court and know uh, we have great representation of the court here, but also want to thank my colleagues, uh, President Klein, Councilwoman Page, Council Members Browns, uh, for their sponsorship of this ordinance as well. I don't know if you all have comments or you want to hear from our friends down the street first. We'll go to Judge Paley for comments. Hi, I want to um, introduce my colleagues. We have Judge O'Grady with us, um, our two administrators, Emily Shaw and John Davenport, and our infamous head of probation, Molly Gottner. Um, I want to, uh, and I'm happy to be back here and thank Council President Klein and all the council members for their support of the courthouse. It is really important. I'm very proud of our court and their dedication to serving this community as well as the help that we're getting from City Hall and helping us serve the community. Um, I feel that the Franklin County Municipal Court is making a difference in our community. Um, since Ms. Gottner has joined the courthouse, we have moved our probation department to evidence-based probation and the goal to keep as many people out of jail as possible um, and help them and assist them in their problems that they may um, be able to fix and end up not spending the $80 a day that we spend for people being in jail. When I was on council and I continued this mantra at the courthouse, saving money and saving lives. It's important, it's something that the city of Columbus does well and we can do that well um, at the courthouse as well. The two pieces of legislation that we have in front of you tonight is the $25,000 for um, work release. Work release is really important, um, but I don't know if all of you are aware that we would like to show the accountability of the money to the city. We have um, joined in partnership with the county, and they actually have given us $100,000 for 2017 and $200,000 for 2018. But with that and with you, we have decided that we will provide um, the numbers of the people that we are deferring from the jail on a quarterly basis. We'll provide that to City Hall so that you can see how the money is being spent and how it's saving money and saving lives. Um, we want to be accountable to you for that as well as the county. Um, keeping people in at work while they're serving time actually allows them to pay child support, pay their taxes, and keep their jobs. That's really important to maintain um, their lives and their lifestyle and also allow them to get the help that they need. So that's the number one. The other one piece of legislation, and then the other piece of legislation is for two new domestic violence probation officers. 
Um, as we moved our system into the evidence-based area, we are trying to sh follow a risk needs respons responsivity principle that tells the court who is the target, what is the target, and to appropriately match offenders to programming as to avoid the one-size-fits-all approach because that is not working. So domestic violence is part of the opiate crisis as well. Um, we've had seen escalating numbers at the courthouse, and so we are trying to get creative in how we can stop the revolving door and again, save money and save lives. Again, my colleagues and I would like to thank President Klein, um, Council Member Stinziano, Council Member Page, Tyson, Brown, Brown, and Harden for uh, their support for the courthouse, and we hope that our relationship will just blossom and we'll be doing great things at the courthouse. Thank, thank you. you, Judge, and again, thank you all for being here. I've really enjoyed the partnership and leadership you all have provided in my role as judiciary, and again, my colleagues support uh, for this ordinance. Any other questions or comments from my colleagues? President Two other Klein. quick comments. Thank you, Councilmember Cinziano, for Courthouse to the Community last week. It was great at the Urban League. And thank you, Councilmember Tyson, for mentioning our health and wellness fair. The probation Department was back there cheering you on. So all come down and visit the Courthouse for our health and wellness fair. Thank you. I want to recognize the work that uh, you are doing, Judge Paley and Judge O'Grady, as well as the probation staff. Uh, I know that, uh, like many of you, Every time I hear a story of domestic violence that has ended up uh, specifically in a homicide, uh, it's, I get more and more troubled and it upsets me and, and I continue to ask myself, what could we have done better to change that situation uh, for that, that woman, that family, the children? Uh, so I know I posed the question to City Attorney Pfeiffer uh, and his staff, Annie Murray, the domestic violence coordinator director uh, within the City Attorney's Office and she brought me back uh, after talking with you uh, brought me back some solutions that we were able to work together and we identified that an, an effective and cost, uh, cost effective solution would be to hire um, these two employees, the high risk lethality domestic violence officer as well as a domestic violence assessment specialist. Uh, and it's my hope that being able to triage on the front end uh, the assessment of these defendants who have committed terrible crimes against their partners uh, that we can hopefully prevent something more tragic that it occurs in the future. Uh, so I, I appreciate the open mind that the bench has shown towards, uh, towards this. Certainly grateful for the continued partnership between the city and the bench uh, so that we can uh, continue to partner together on how we can not only save taxpayer money but truly make our community safer, uh, which I think sometimes is lost in the shuffle uh, between uh, trying to um, state political talking points that somehow have more to do with politics than actually evidence-based approaches uh, that uh, has a resounding impact on improving the lives of our community. So I'm grateful for this partnership and I look forward to future collaboration with, with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, President Klein. And with that, I'll move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. The next ordinance in Judiciary and Court Administration is Ordinance 2701-2017 to authorize a supplemental appropriation within the Public Safety Initiative sub fund to the Franklin County Municipal Court in support of the court's work release program and to declare an emergency. Again, appreciate all of the Municipal Court and their uh, work with work release programs. Again, want to thank all of my colleagues uh, for their co-sponsorships, particularly Council Member Page, Council Members Mitch Brown, Councilwoman Elizabeth Brown, and Council President Klein for all your work and diligence on this ordinance. Uh, seeing that our members of the court have left except Judge O'Grady, um, if there are no questions or comments, I'll move for passage. By and voice. by voice. <laughs> Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Hardin? Yes. Page? Yes. Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Abstain. President Klein? Yes. If I can move on to public utilities. Tonight in public utilities, bring forward ordinance 2335-2017 to authorize the director of public utilities to enter into a construction contract with Kokosian Industrial Incorporated for the Jackson Pike Wastewater Treatment Plant Primary Clarifier Electrical Upgrades Project. 
to authorize the appropriation and transfer of $3,815,700 from the Sanitary Sewer Reserve Fund to the Ohio Water Development Loan Fund and to authorize the expenditure of up to $3,815,700 from said loan fund for the Division of Sewer and Drainage. Uh, this project consists of replacing, replacing existing electrical equipment for the Jackson Pike plant primary clarifiers. For those that are wondering, the clarifiers are settling tanks built for the continuous removal of solids being deposited by sedimentation. So I think we can all agree it's a good thing that we're updating them. Uh, projects like these extend the life, useful life of existing structures and eliminate expenses of increased efficiency. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Legislation passes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we're now going to go to finance as chaired by the President Pro Tem. President Pro Tem, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. I have the first ordinance is 2661-2017 to authorize the issuance of limited tax bonds in, the, in an amount not to exceed $11,275,000 for the purpose of providing funds to refund certain outstanding general obligation bonds of the city of, city of the city. Section 41-1B of the City Charter. Uh, Auditor Dorian, do you want to make some comments on this legislation? Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson Tyson. And with your permission, I'll speak to both 2660 and the following ordinance, 2661. Please note that both ordinances speak to amounts not to exceed because the final amounts will really be driven by market conditions. This is an attempt on our part to borrow new money at lower interest rates, take the money borrowed and pay off some old debt at higher interest rates, very similar to refinancing the mortgage on your house. This uh, deal, as we refer to it, will be done on November 2nd, much work to be done yet. So uh, I expect to, uh, I always hesitate to say how much because we never know until the day we do it, but let me say a few million dollars I think we'll save. So I ask for and uh, recommend your support of both ordinances. Thank you, Mr. Dorian. And certainly any time we can save a few million dollars, we are pleased as a city. Um, so with that, I request to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you, move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. I think I read, I'm sorry, 2661 first, and I need to. Thank you. And the first one is uh, 2660 to authorize the issuance of unlimited tax bonds in an amount not to exceed $245,825,000 for the purpose of providing funds to refund certain outstanding general obligation bonds of the city. Section 41-1B of the city charter. I first move to um, request to waive second reading. Both of them passed. Read 2661. First. Yes, correct. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Correct. I move. Move a passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. And now I have Ordinance 2665-2000. Um, 17 is to authorize the Department of Finance and Management to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Franklin County Commissioners in order to reimburse the Franklin County, Franklin County for the city's portion of the Ohio Public Employment Retirement Systems, OPERS, liability costs associated with the case of the state, uh, the state uh, versus Altman, Altman, ba no, State Altman Bates versus Public Employees Retirement Board, 2016, Ohio 3100, to authorize the appropriation and expenditure up to $3 million from the Special Income Tax Fund and to declare an emergency. Deputy Director Dan Giangardella, could you please share why we are um, uh, making this payment to, to OPRS? President Klein, Chair Tyson, members of council, 
Uh, the Finance and Management Department is seeking authority to sign a memorandum of understanding with the Franklin County Commissioners in order to reimburse Franklin County $3 million um, due to the Ohio Supreme Court case Altman Bates versus Public Employees Retirement Board. I believe the decision was rendered in 2016. Prior to 1999, the public defenders, which the county and city share financial responsibility, were not considered to be eligible for the pension under OPERS. Two Ohio Supreme Court decisions, Altman Bates, and an earlier decision uh, called Mallory um, from 1988, the Ohio Supreme Court determined that the public, the public defenders were indeed eligible for pension under OPERS. Franklin County and the city were both a party to the original Mallory case previously, and the city reimbursed Franklin County approximately $3.7 million in pension obligations through 2009. Although the city was not a direct party to this most recent case, uh, Altman Bates, but because the county and the city obviously continue to share the cost of the pension for the public, or the cost for the public defenders, Franklin County is seeking reimbursement of $3 million from the city for the cost of the public defender's pension obligation due to this most recent case. Since 1999, the public defenders are now pension eligible, so we're basically talking about um, work done prior to uh, January 1999. So hopefully this reimbursement um, uh, it will be only for those employees that are eligible for that work prior to 1999. Um, it's possible there could be uh, some pension liability yet um, owed for that work, but again, we think um, that the vast majority of this obligation will now be taken care of with this uh, second Supreme Court case. Uh, so if there are any um, future payments, they, they would be probably very small in nature. Um, I'd be happy to try to answer any questions council may have about this, and I appreciate considering this ordinance this evening. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. Now to move to Health and Human Services. Thank you. I have ordinance number 2285-2017, and um, this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and certainly with the legislation that we just passed, um, in uh, Councilman Stenziano's committee, this kind of goes hand in hand with that. This is a, or, an ordinance to authorize the director of the Department of Development to enter into a, a grant agreement with the Lutheran Social Services to provide funding for costs associated with the construction of a new shelter for the survivors of domestic violence and to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of $500,000 from the Special Income Tax Fund and to declare an emergency. This new shelter will replace existing facilities which shows major signs of aging. It is inefficient and has a design that is not large enough to meet the community needs, which is unfortunate. Um, a study team comprised of local elected officials, law enforcement, corporate supporters, and regional domestic violence experts helped to establish the design expect expectations. The amenities will include capacity, housing capacity for 120 residents with flexibility for future expansion if needed. Um, there will be several communal, communal areas and counseling rooms, as well as space for youth programs, a secure outdoor playground and garden. Um, there will be the state-of-the-art security, and there will be um, kennels for the pets. For nearly four, four decades, the Lu Lutheran Social Service Choices for Victims of Domestic Violence have providing a safe and secure shelter for the victims of domestic violence in Central Ohio. And in the audience today is Sue Varillo, is the Choices Executive Director, as well as Rick Davis, who is the Chief Operating Officer for the Lutheran Social Services. If there are no questions or comments, I'm going to move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. And the last ordinance in my um, committee this evening is Ordinance 2468-2007. It's to authorize and direct the Board of Health to enter into contracts with the Research Institute at Nationwide Children's Hospital, Primary One Health, and the Ohio Support Services Corp for the Women, Infants, and Children's Program to authorize expenditure of $634,100 from the Health Department's Grants Fund to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Codes and to declare an emergency.
These grant funds awarded provide for multiple contracts to meet various grant deliverables in an amount not to exceed the $634,100. Uh, it waives competitive bidding in order to delay um, any delays in providing program services to meet the grant deliverables. If there are no questions and comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. That's all I have in my committee this evening. Thank you, President Pro Tem. The next committee's economic development is chaired by Councilmember Elizabeth Brown. Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. In economic development tonight, we have Ordinance 2602-2017 to authorize the Director of the Department of Finance and Management to issue a purchase order to King Business Interiors for the purchase of furniture and fixtures, including redesign fees needed by the Department of Development for its new offices located at 111 North Front Street, to waive the competitive bidding provisions of Columbus City Code uh, 329, to authorize an amendment to the 2017 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize the transfer, appropriation, and expenditure of $55,000 as follows. General Permanent Improvement Fund, $32,500, and Development Services Fund, $22,500, and to declare an emergency. Director Shoney, could you just uh, uh, shed some light on the waiver of competitive bidding? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, President Klein, members of Council. Uh, this will allow us to move quickly to secure this, um, these pieces of furniture. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving our economic development division from the Lazarus building out of lease space into uh, this property. This is filling in space that we had planned on having the uh, uh, city's land bank in when we made the decision to co-locate the city land bank with the county land bank down on Parsons Avenue. That has led to a bunch of shifting and this will allow us to move quickly um, in order to get our folks in when the building opens. All right. Thank you. Any questions from my colleagues? I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. I have one in administration. Great, thanks. Um, Ordinance 2447-2017, to authorize the Director of the Department of Human Resources to contract with the United Way of Central Ohio for the purpose of providing coordination services for the City of Columbus 2017 Combined Charitable Campaign to authorize the expenditure of $36,075 from the Employee Benefits Fund to waive competitive bidding requirements of the Columbus City Code. This year marks the 25th anniversary of City of Columbus employees participating in a combined charitable campaign. The campaign is a citywide collaborative effort that provides employees the opportunity to make donations to charitable organizations through payroll deduction or one-time contributions. This contract represents an agreement between the city and United Way of Central Ohio for the coordination of this campaign, which lasts for a 24-month period from 2017 through 2018. Starting in 2013, the Department of Human Resources has funded the coordination efforts so that every dollar contributed by city employees goes to their designated charity. Competitive bidding is being waived because the United Way is uniquely capable of providing the needed services and has worked with the City of Columbus for 24 years in this capacity. I'd like to thank Director Brandon for her department's ongoing efforts and what I think is an excellent <laughs> opportunity for our um, employees and for organizations across the city. I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add. Okay, thank you, Director Brandon. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Passed. That's all I have in my committees. The next committee's public service and transportation is chaired by Councilmember Hardin. Chair Hardin, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. Uh, this evening in public service and transportation, we have Ordinance 2601-2017 to authorize the city's chief innovation officer to enter into contract with Clean Fuels Ohio for the purpose of distributing uh, rebate funds in connection with the Smart Columbus multi-unit dwelling electric vehicle charging rebate program and to authorize expenditure of up to $172,000 for this program from the Smart Cities Private Grant Fund and to declare an emergency. We have the Chief Innova Innovation Officer himself, Mr. Mike Stevens, here to talk about this uh, ordinance. Mr. Thank you. Stevens. Thank you. President Klein, Chairman Hardin, members of Council. As part of our Smart Columbus grant with Vulcan, we are working to reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, through electric vehicle adoption. This legislation aims at two of Vulcan's priorities, increasing consumer adoption of electric vehicles and creating a robust framework of charging infrastructure to support such adoption. 
This innovative program encourages the installation of electric vehicle charging ports in multi-unit dwellings using grant dollars. According to the United States Department of Energy, approximately 80% of electric vehicles charging occurs at home, and many people in multi-unit dwellings lack the facilities to charge their vehicle. The proposed rebate program will provide partial funding for new and existing multi-unit dwelling developments to install electric vehicle charging facilities. Each applicant may receive a rebate of up to $25,000 per property, but cannot exceed $3,500 per space that they're going to install a plug. Uh, awardees must provide a cash, cash match of 35% of total project cost, and the funds will be awarded to selected applicants following completion and inspection of the installed equipment. We're also asking that awardees provide quarterly reports to include data on utilization, marketing educational efforts, and any useful feedback from the facility and residents that can provide lessons learned and development of best practices. I want to thank our partners at Clean Fuels Ohio who are helping us administer this program, and I appreciate your consideration. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Um, as you said, this is the first year of this uh, rebate. We are um, going to uh, evaluate this, make sure to see how, how it goes, see how we get these uh, dollars out. Um, and as you also said, this is coming out of the Vulcan side of the grant, so there's no, no city dollars involved, but $172,000 to get us closer to our goal of um, uh, providing the infrastructure for uh, electrification in the city. That's correct. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, President Klein. Uh, quickly, I will move to small business, small and minority business. We have Ordinance 2571-2017 to authorize the Columbus City Council to enter into contract with The Ohio State University for Innovation and Entrepreneurship for the development of a strategic plan for the CBiz Incubator Accelerator to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Special Income Tax Fund. Um, President Klein, it's been an honor to work with you over the last year uh, on the CBiz initiative. Um, would you like to add any uh, uh, comments? Thank yeah, thank you, Chair Harden. I'm, I'm glad that Mr. Reeder, the Executive Director of the Ohio State University Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship is here, so thank you for coming. Uh, it's no surprise that entrepreneurship is one of the most powerful avenues for upward uh, mobility. And last year that the center and the council partnered together to do a McKinsey-like analysis for two entities uh, operating in the city of Columbus to provide them managerial consulting services of how they can improve their businesses, hire more people, uh, which is the aim, I think, for any business to make more money, hire more people. Uh, and certainly we as a council are interested in providing economic opportunity for those that, that seek. And I believe that seek it. I believe Mr. Reeder has some results to share in that space, uh, but this is a, is a venture uh, being so uh, impressed with the work that the innovation the center has done, the, the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, uh, that we have asked you and the, the center uh, to provide us some help in, in considering the creation of an incubate, incubator and accelerator that is focused specifically on minority business enterprises. Uh, and this has come through not only uh, in community conversation that involved Leadership Columbus, uh, but also in our council's own uh, everyday interactions with the community and talking about access to capital, uh, figuring out how uh, folks in the small minority business uh, space can take not only their thoughts into a business, but their current business to the next level. Uh, and identifying how that's done sometimes can be daunting. So we're encouraged by the work that uh, the strategic plan that you're going to be putting together and guiding us on what that would look like if we would proceed to go down that path, how it's done, how it would be funded, who would participate, answering all kind of the five who, what, when, where, why uh, answers. So Mr. Reeder, I've talked enough on this space. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you again, President Klein and council members, and, uh, and thank you again to our uh, co-sponsor, uh, Councilmember Hardin, um, I thank you for letting me come up and talk a little bit about a program that you funded last year that we are, uh, I, I would say, done with, but we're not going to be done with it because I want to continue to see the two companies that you helped uh, last year, and that's Rebuilding Together Central Ohio, which is a tool sharing uh, nonprofit in the Linden area, as well as Watt One Electric, which is a solar power. Um, installer also based in Linden, and I say they're not complete because we have in fact provided them with the with their uh, strategic plan, but we continue to work with both organizations right now, um, really essentially on our 
Ohio State dollars because we feel that we want to continue to support these two small businesses. And as a pilot, we recognize the value of not just leaving them at the door. And so this is where I think the value of this uh, strategic plan is, is that we recognize the revitalization corridors as being key components to economic development in, uh, in the city. Um, and when we first started to talk about this project uh, with the city, it was my recommendation that we um, actually spend the time to ask the small businesses in each of those communities that it would be presumptuous of us to say as a university we know what the communities want or recognize that there aren't personality differences in each of those communities and so along with Leadership Columbus we uh, looked at the south side also in coordination with the Parsons Avenue Merchants Association and we had almost 300 uh, responses from local businesses 300 responses I mean this is a significant number not only did it give us a good uh, statistical analysis of the interest of that particular area, but it showed the interest of the small businesses in that area to participate both with the city as well as in a, a plan that would allow them to grow their, their individual businesses. And this is where I think the importance of a program like this in coordination with Ohio State as a land-grant institution is that we need to be looking at, uh, at these small and minority businesses in a way to allow them to grow one employee at a time, two employees at a time, to double their revenue. Um, and we believe that this also provides a great opportunity for our students, uh, both undergraduate as graduate students, to be able to understand their value in that community and not just you know, be uh, romanticized by the startups that are so prevalent uh, you know, in our city right now. So I think this is a very encouraging uh, plan and, and we have students uh, at the ready hoping for a passage of this to begin to work immediately on this strategic plan. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Reader, um, for all the work and, and your students and, and everyone on this project. Certainly, thank you to President Klein and also Matt Erickson uh, in the LRO office for uh, moving this along. If there are no uh, further questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Any other thing? You're good? Uh, what we're going to do, since we're nine minutes past our zoning agenda, and Councilmember Page chairs that agenda, that committee, but she also chairs Rec and Parks and Housing, uh, so I'm going to take a motion for recess uh, now. Just clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. We are recessed of regular meeting 49. Chair, are you ready to move into zoning, or do you need a second? Ready to move into zoning? Can I get a motion to convene uh, zoning meeting number 50? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. Regular meeting number 50 will now come to order. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. We are now in the zoning committee. It's chaired by council member Jiza Page. All members serve on the committee. Chair Page, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, President Klein. We do not have any speaker slips this evening, but I would like to swear in our staff who may make additional comments. So on the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against any council variants, including staff, to please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn in. I swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. 2307-2017, to grant a variance from the provisions of section 337005 <laughs> permitted uses and 331249B, minimum number of parking spaces required of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 279 East 5th Avenue, 43201, to permit a fitness center with reduced parking in the LM Limited Manufacturing District. The applicant is Ryan McFadden. The proposed use is a fitness center. The city department's recommendation is approval. Italian Village Commission's recommendation is approval. Are there any additional comments from staff? Are you Mr. McFadden? I'm actually Mr. Phillips. I'm Mr. McFadden's attorney. Okay. Well, welcome to council this evening, Mr. Phillips. And do you have any additional comments about the project? Uh, yes. So. I mean, the main thing that we're here tonight, as we just talked about uh, entrepreneurship, we've got a young entrepreneur who's opened this fitness facility who's uh, been working to try and get zoning approval basically since February, and now we're here almost eight months later. Uh, 
the reason that we're here for an emergency vote tonight is we're trying to prevent basically shutdown of this building. He's had to be out of his premises now for multiple months, occupying outside or working outside. And obviously, as we just felt the cold snap today, that's soon to be untenable. So um, no one's trying to skirt any of the requirements. He's worked at all times in good faith to try and get here. And now we're simply trying to go over the last hurdle. If I can take any questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Are there any additional questions or comments? Seeing none, I would first like to move to amend to emergency. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. I now move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. 2532-2017 to rezone 1281 Mount Vernon Avenue 43203 being approximately three acres located at the southeast corner of Mount Vernon Avenue and North Champion Avenue from C4 Commercial District to ARLD Apartment Residential District. The applicant is Columbus Metropolitan Housing Authority. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The City Department's recommendation is approval. Near East Area Commission's recommendation is approval. Are there any additional comments from staff? Is the applicant present and would like to make any additional comments? I would first like to move to amend to emergency. So moved. By, four. by four. Ms. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes. Hardin? Yes. Page? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Abstain. President Klein? I now move for passage by voice. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Hardin? Yes. Page? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Abstain. President Klein? 2594 2017. To rezone 1200 Hamlet Street 43201, being approximately 0.21 acres located on the east side of Hamlet Street, approximately 95 feet north of East Fifth Avenue from R4 Residential District and C4 Commercial District to R3 Residential District. The applicant is Connie J. Klima. The proposed use is a single unit residential development. The City Department's recommendation is approval. University Area Commission's recommendation is approval. Are there any additional comments from staff? Is the applicant president like to make any additional comments? I would first like to move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. I now move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. 2595-2017, to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 33.12.25, maneuvering, 33.32.05A4, area district lot width requirements, 33.32.13R3, area district requirements, 33.32.21F, building lines, and 33.32.26E, minimum side yard permitted of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 1200 Hamlet Street, 43201, to permit four single unit dwellings with reduced development standards in the R3 residential district. The applicant is Connie J. Klima. The proposed use is a single unit residential development. The city department's recommendation is approval. University Area Commission's recommendation is approval. Any additional comments from staff? Any comments from the applicant? I would first like to move to waive second reading. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. I now move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. And that's all we have in zoning this evening. Thank you, Chair Page. Can I get a motion to adjourn regular meeting number 50? Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. Can I get a motion to reconvene regular meeting number 49? Yes. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. We are now back in regular meeting number 49. Our next committee is Recreation and Parks. It's chaired by Councilmember Page. Chair Page, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Klein. This evening in Recreation and Parks, we have Ordinance 2377-2017, in which I'm co-sponsoring with Councilmember Shannon Hardin and Councilmember Michael Stenziano. And in 
this ordinance is to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to accept a grant from the Franklin County Juvenile Court to expand the APPS Job Readiness Program to teens and young adults that currently have open misdemeanor cases with the juvenile court system, and to authorize the appropriation of an amount not to exceed $220,000 $20,000 to the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund. This is a new program that is going to soon be in existence with the Department of Recreation and Parks as well as the Franklin County Juvenile Court. And the court, I believe, approached the department, wanted to find a different way to help juveniles and young adults who have open misdemeanors who are becoming acquainted with the judicial the judicial system in order to make sure that they are being rehabilitated and we're finding different outlets for them. And so this is going to create more jobs for the young people and it is really important that it's expanding up upon the application of Purpose, Pride, and Success that was created under former Michael Coleman with the support of Councilmember Shannon Harden. And this program continues to grow, continues to work with young people that are at risk in our community and we're definitely very proud of this. There are any additional comments from either of my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for pass. Sorry. Oh, yes, President Pro Tem Tyson. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to say to you, Council Member uh, Chair Page, to Council Member Harden, and to the Department of Recreation and Parks. I know it's getting late, but I think this is a really an important program. When you know, I read the details about this, how it has the uh, has the opportunity to you know pay young people between ten and twelve dollars an hour to be able to, um, if they have, um, based upon whatever, if they've gotten into some trouble and they have to pay the restitution, that this will give them an opportunity to do that. It really does have an opportunity to, to really change the life of a young person. And so I just commend um, this team, the administration, our council colleagues, and um, the um, Franklin County Juvenile Court System for coming up with, a, with an innovative idea to be able to help our young people. So kudos to you guys, and uh, I look forward to hearing the results of this program to, to change the lives of our young people. Congratulations. Thank you, President Pro Tem Tyson. Are there any other comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. 2378-2017, to authorize the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into contract with Quarter at Nemeth Engineering Incorporated for a revised segment of the Camp Chase Trail, Sullivan Avenue to Georgesville Road, to amend the 2017 CIB and transfer funding within the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund, to authorize the expenditure of $46,654 from the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund, and to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code, and to declare an emergency. This is a revision of the existing contract with Quarter, and that's why there is a request to waive the competitive bidding provisions. And if there are no additional questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. 2383-2017, to authorize the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into contract with Light Up Columbus, LLC, for installation, service, and removal of holiday lighting along the Sayota Promenade, to authorize the expenditure of $39,410 from the Recreation and Parks Property Management Fund to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code and to declare an emergency. The department has worked with Light Up Columbus LLC for some years now in order to provide this lighting experience that we all go to. During December, we're getting ready for our Christmas time, and that's why there's a request to waive competitive bidding. If there are no further questions or comments, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stinziano, Tyson, President Klein. And just so we all mark our calendars, the lighting will take place on December 2nd of this year. And our final ordinance in Recreation and Parks is 2579-2017 to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into contracts with 30 community agencies to provide social and nutrition services to older adults in Central Ohio during 2018 to authorize the expenditure of $6,462,000 from the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund and to declare an emergency. There are no questions or comments. I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. President Klein, if I may move to the Housing Committee. 
Resolution 0262X-2017, to, to determine that the petition to establish the 50, 555 West Goodell New Community Authority and District is sufficient and complies with the requirements of the Ohio Revised Code to set the time and place for a hearing on the petition and authorize the notice of such hearing by publication and to declare an emergency. Are there any additional comments from the director? Uh, thank you, Chair Page, uh, President Klein, members of council. This is part of our effort to redevelop the old White Castle headquarters site. We're going to be creating a new community authority over that site to help pay for some of the infrastructure. This is the first of two or three steps, I think, in the process to create a new community authority. So you will be seeing legislation related to this coming back up later. Thank you, Director. Are there any questions or comments? CNN, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. That's all I have, President Klein. Thank you, Chair. Uh, any other business to come before regular meeting number 49? Seeing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Clerk, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Hardin, Page, Stenziano, Tyson, President Klein. We stand adjourned, regular meeting number 49. Uh, we do have one non-agenda speaker.